This is a National Cash Register Model 711 from the 1920s. It's really big. A bit too big for my corner in the basement, I mean my film studio. It has buttons labeled with various amounts from five cents up to a whole dollar. Up here it's got little tabs behind glass that pop up when you push the button. Visible from both sides. It has a wooden base covering the whole footprint, a wooden drawer, and a cute little shelf here made of glass maybe. This one looks pretty bad cosmetically, but it seems to be in perfect working order. And hey look, I got another one too. The National Cash Register Company was founded in 1884 by industrialist hustler John H. Patterson. Patterson became sort of a legendary figure in the heyday of direct individual sales. NCR salesmen would personally go out to businesses all over the world to convince people why they needed a cash register. It's impossible to be sure about this, but Patterson is credited with inventing the idea of a uniform, rehearsed sales pitch based on a company sales manual. When talking to groups of people, Patterson innovated the practice of using big printed charts and diagrams to make his point. He basically invented the marketing slideshow, so thanks, I guess. National Cash Register was the first company to produce machines like this at scale, and they totally dominated the market with a combination of good business and illegal shenanigans. The whole executive team was convicted under antitrust law violations, and they were often accused of stealing patents. Apparently, NCR would see a competitor's patent and try to patent the same thing, but for themselves. They would just add some random extra stuff so that it looked different, but the important stuff was all ripped off. In the words of one competitor, their so-called innovations were just ornamental gym cracks which cumber the machine. That's harsh. Old NCR machines are kind of big with collectors. A nicely restored one can cost several hundred dollars. Really nice ones will run you a curda. I see these every so often at like hipster coffee shops and they're almost always jammed. This one here only cost me $45 at a thrift shop probably because it looks like a piece of junk but I was shocked to find that it seems to work perfectly. This other one is in much better cosmetic shape, but it's jammed. Actually, when I got it, the drawer was stuck open. I managed to clean out some gunk jammed into the back of the machine, and I finally got the door closed, and now the door is stuck closed. That's kind of worse than it used to be. This one over here seems to be a Model 711, which was made in the 1920s. It looks like whoever owned it before me tried to customize it or something and ended up making it a lot worse. Here's an eBay picture of what it originally looked like. The case is stainless steel, which originally had a fake wood grain paint on it. There was a brass plate on the front that they took off. You can see the screw holes there. And another one up here. The white marble shelf was replaced with this black thing. The inside is supposed to look like this, the same wood grain, but I guess they tried to paint it black. The black paint is flaking off, so you can see the original under there. They somehow removed the paint from the outside too, so now it's just bare, rusty panels. This blank canvas here makes me wonder what I could do. Oh, I got the perfect thing. You know I got Curta stickers? Ha, <laughs> don't worry, it's just a magnet. I'm joking. The wooden drawer at least seems to be totally unmodified. Hey look, it came with a Jack Daniels Pog. And I'll let you in on a little secret that every true NCR collector knows. These machines had a custom-made information card printed and glued to the bottom of the drawer. See that? Unfortunately, we can't get much info out of this thing. This here is the machine's unique serial number, 2355503. One website I found says that this serial number indicates a date of 1925. The rest of the info would have been filled in by hand. It'll tell you which model, machine, who bought it, other stuff. But well, this one looks like it was never filled in. The other machine's info is much clearer. Luckily, I photographed this before I jammed the drawer shut forever. It's made in 1953. Just turned 70 last week. This is model 122. Two. First purchased by Frank Koziki. Still don't work, though. All right, I think it's time to talk about how to use it. And I must say, I didn't really understand this correctly before I got this thing. A modern cash register is basically an elaborate calculator. You enter stuff item by item and it adds it all up for you. The machine's main job is to help the cashier total it all up correctly. This, my friends, is wrong. At the time this machine was made, when every shop worth going to had an NCR cash register, those registers did not add the total for you. 
it was the cashier's job to add it all up and then you just type the total into the machine yourself. So if my total sale is 80 cents, I just hit this guy here. The number pops up, visible on the back, and the drawer slides open, and you hear that sweet bell. You got buttons for a bunch of different amounts here, only multiples of 5 cents, and you can combine them together. So if I want 85 cents, I hit the 80 and the 5 at the same time. A dollar 40, I hit the dollar and the 40. And yeah, you can even do a dollar 45. It's kind of cute how these buttons are arranged. They look like they're going to slam into each other if you push one of the ones on the top row, but they know where to go. The machine won't let you combine buttons that you're not supposed to. Like, you can't push the 90 and the 80 at the same time. So this machine has a maximum total amount of $1.95. That should be enough, right? The other one has more buttons. You can do any amount of cents, 0 through 9, and it has a $2 button for the high rollers. All right, so you just type in the total. i got to add it up myself, though. From a modern point of view, this is kind of ridiculous. If the machine doesn't add it up for you, then how is it helping the cashier at all? The answer is, it's not helping the cashier at all. In fact, cashiers absolutely hated the cash register when it first came out. It was just like an extra hassle that they had to go through every time they made a sale. So what is it all for? Well, there's one more feature, something I didn't show you yet. It's right in here. This thing actually does have an adding machine in it, and the display is right here. It keeps a running total of every transaction that the machine makes. That's the killer feature, the entire purpose of the cash register. The sinister truth is that the cash register was invented to prevent cashiers from stealing money from the shop. See, without a cash register, they'd just keep the money in a drawer or a box or something. And it's not so hard, you know, when old man Jenkins isn't looking, the employees could just, you know, help themselves to a little something. But with this thing, everything about this thing is big and loud and public. Most obviously, you can't just open the drawer. The only way the drawer opens is if you hit the buttons. And then the bell rings. The bell is not just a cutesy little touch. The purpose of the bell is to make it impossible for your thieving employees to open the drawer without anyone noticing. And the numbers pop up. This makes it clear to everyone what amount is supposed to be going into the machine. And that amount is being recorded inside the machine, so I better get it right. The cash register is not a machine for employee convenience. It is a machine for employee surveillance. This one has a counter for the number of transactions and also the number of times you ring up a no sale. These ones I guess aren't important for security because you can reset them to zero using the little dial. But the other one, the register total, if you want to clear that you need the key and the cashier doesn't get the key. The key is for the boss man, so no funny business. Actually, you can't even look at that number without the key. There's a lock on the case here, so a typical employee won't even be able to see this stuff at all. My other machine has similar stuff under the hood, but it's locked and I don't have the key, so no more gym cracks for me. I've had my eye out for a cash register for many years, so I'm glad I got my hands on these. Unfortunately, they're very big and heavy. These each weigh 65 pounds, and the real collectible ones are even bigger. So buying online isn't a good option. Even if you find one for cheap, you'll get killed on the shipping. I got this one at a thrift shop nearby, and I got this one from my very own barber shop. My barber's in an old shop started by a guy who's passed away for some time now, and now the place is run by his kids. And they had this thing sitting around for decades. Not really sure what to do with it, but you don't really want to throw it away, not when it was your dad's. It's a piece of the man and his life's work. A man I never knew, but he loved people and people loved him. People today really love these old things. It evokes a nostalgia for a mythical American past. A time when a hard day's work was its own reward and a dollar really meant something. When a butcher, a barber, a factory worker, even a grocery store cashier were all respected and valued for their simple but vital and hard work. That's how it makes us feel today, but the cashiers who used these things in the 1920s hated them. A big, heavy, expensive metal monster designed for the sole purpose of monitoring their behavior. It's a dark precursor to our own times, full of employee tracking and snooping. You know, it makes me think I should probably get back to my real job of serious mathematics. But then I recall a single word, a whisper really, heard not with my ears but in my heart, from the Latin meaning they got nothing on me. The word is tenure.